Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penj and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we rejoin Duke Waltheoff of Cupboard and of course his most marvellous hat and last time out we managed to fend off the attack from the young evil upstart Duke Gluithian himself who declared war on us with the sole aim of taking away the title of our beloved Duchy of Cupboard and returning it to himself because he felt that he rightly owned this place. I mean I don't know where he got that idea from. It's called the Duchy of Cupboard and we're the Cupboard Dynasty. I mean I don't know where he's made that mistake. It must have been a clerical error or something like that. But he declared war on us, but we managed to beat him. Now, we did call upon our allies, the French, to help us, and it looked good for a moment, but then they got stuck in all sorts of kind of, you know, domestic matters. So the French did not come to help us. So we were looking a little bit, it was looking a little bit kind of dicey as to whether we could actually beat him. And then we were very, very fortunate indeed. So we went over here, we sieged this place here, we sieged Harlech, possibly Harlech, and we managed to capture Duke Gluithian himself. I mean, it was a very, very fortunate thing, but we got him, and if you capture the enemy war commander, that is pretty much an instant win. I think you get plus 100% war score, and that is it. You can end the war, because you, you've got the person who's leading the opposition. So, we managed to win that war pretty simply. I don't think much happened to many of our territories, so that was very, very nice. So, uh, it has meant that we've also you know, we've still got an alliance with France. That's fine. They didn't come to help us, but they've called upon us to help them in a couple of battles that they're having as well. So we need to go and help our French allies at some point, but at the moment we're just building up our troops because, uh, because you know, there was some fighting going on and we did have to do a couple of battles and all that kind of stuff. So we are sort of still trying to get our troop numbers back up. I mean, we can have a total of 4,121 troops, yet we've only got 2,730. So I think we need to kind of work on topping up our kind of armies a little bit, but we will go and help our French allies at some point, just not right now. Because, you know, they left us waiting. They left us waiting, so it seems fair that you know, we make them sweat a little bit. But yeah, we'll go and join in at some point, France, don't you worry. Also last time, very important development is that T finally got married. I know it was long overdue. I know, I know. Lots of people in the comments kept saying, you need to make sure T gets married because, you know, he's the heir. And then when he gets married, he might have some children and they are going to be continuing the dynasty. And of course, if uh, something happens to Waltheof, which, you know, hopefully it won't happen for a long while, but if something does happen to Waltheof, we'll end up playing as T. And then if something happens to T at some point, we might well be playing as T's children. So yes, we need to make sure that T has some children. So there is his lovely wife, Leo de Gundia Cisnandez de Vides. And yes, yeah, she's very beautiful, which is wonderful, which increases her fertility by 30%. So hopefully we will see some children appearing soon. You know, you can write letters to the stork really, really well. 30% better letters to the stork. That's what that means. And also quite importantly, she is Midas touched, which is very, very good. So if we do take over, as T. One day, if something happens to Waltheof and he passes away, and it's all very sad, and T takes over the title of the Duke of Cupboard, he is going to be struggling with the money side of things, because his stewardship is terrible. Domain tax is down 10%. However, bringing her in, she's Midas touched, which means she is very, very good at stewardship, which is excellent. So she can lend a hand with the stewardship side of things, which means hopefully we will not be too out of pocket when T takes over with his terrible money management skills. Oh yeah, and of course we saw a big change to who is actually managing England now, because last time the King of England died. King Robert died of his injuries, which means that King Richard the Foolish, which is not a title you'd really want, is it? <laughs> Surely you'd try and change that. You know, do some spin, get some PR people in, change that round. But uh, yes, King Richard the Foolish has now taken over. And it wasn't that long ago since those two had a war. They had a big old war in which you know, our counties suffered a little bit. Because, uh, because, yeah, King Robert here declared war on his brother, trying to get back Welsh control. He wanted the Kingdom of Wales under his control. And he won. So for a while, King Richard was a bit of a nobody. I think maybe, did he get himself an earldom or something? I can't remember now, but he wasn't really that important anymore. His brother had got control of everything. He was ruling all of the country again. It was all wonderful. And then, yes, his brother has since died. So now Richard has taken over again. So, uh, yeah, he's been very, very fortunate. But there you go. Well done, King Richard. Hello, my liege. Good beard and a particularly good hat. Actually, yeah, that's a very impressive crown. One day we'll have a crown like that. 
So I think let's turn our attention to helping out our French allies, shall we? Because they are in a spot of bother. They're in a bit of a pickle because they're currently fighting two defensive wars. So two different people have declared war on France, trying to take away French territory. And do you know what? I completely understand France now why you didn't come and help us. And you're entirely, entirely forgiven. Because we did not go and help the Irish when they called upon our help for very, very similar reasons, didn't we? So the Irish said, hey, come and help us, uh, Duchy of Cupboard. And we said, yeah, okay, we'll come and help you a war and then we got attacked so of course all our troops remained at home trying to defend our own territory and we didn't go and help the irish for quite a long time and a similar thing has happened with france we called upon the french aid they said yes we'll come and help you and then they got attacked so they're looking after their own interests at home which yeah i completely understand you're entirely forgiven king philippe of france i'll let you off this time so let's have a look what's going on with these two wars this one here is a duchy level war. This is a big war up here. Uh, so the Lotharingians are trying to claim the Duchy of Flanders, which is this sort of area up here. And it's not going too well for our side. Minus 13 war score, um, battles not looking good at all. Captured territory, minus 17% of the war score for that. There is one sort of highlight in that we seem to have captured an heir which gives us a plus 10% boost to the war score. So I guess we've got King Gottfried's heir, which is good. But yeah, that sort of that war is not going overly well. The other war, where's that for? Montpellier. So that's down the south somewhere. There it is. So uh, this war is going far better. This has got a war score of plus 48%. Uh, we currently hold Montpellier, which is pretty good. So you would get a nice big chunk of war score from just holding that territory. Battles have gone well. Territory, we've lost a bit there and we've not got any prisoners. But this one is looking far better. So what I think we'll do is, to help out our French allies, don't you worry, we're on our way. Um, I think we will go and help out with this war here. Because, you know, it's on 48%. It's almost half won. The war is almost 50% won. So we will go and sort out this war here. We'll send some people down here. We'll go and take back those two places, I think. Maybe we'll go and attack some of the uh, sort of... It's these guys over here, isn't it? It's Provence sort of attack. So we'll go and take some territories over in Provence. We'll get that war sorted. And if that's then won, the French don't need to worry about this. And they can concentrate all their troops up here on fighting for that duchy. And it's also a bit of an excuse for some of our people to come down here and enjoy the weather on the beautiful French South Coast, which is splendid. So, you know, it's a nice bonus for them. They can, you know, top up their tans and what have you. So before we set off, I think we should spend our 306 gold that we've got right now on topping up some of our men at arms regiments. Let's get some more troops in just to make us a little bit more sort of powerful in battle. So let's get ourselves some extra bowmen. I think that probably is a good idea. They're not that expensive, are they? 55. 55 gold to get ourselves 100 extra bowmen. And they're really good. They're nice and versatile. So yeah, we'll get them in. So there we go. Increase that size. And then I think, let's get another, let's get another 10 mangonels in as well. So let's have a size three unit of mangonels. So that gives us an extra bit of siege power, which means sieges will go quicker, which is lovely. And then we've got 185 money left. Can we get some more? Yeah, huskars are good. Or armored footmen. Who are better? 39, 24, 47, 28, and they act as a screen. Yeah, let's get some more Huskars in. I bet they're more expensive. 117 as opposed to 90. So we could get some more Armoured Footmen, or we could get some Huskars. Let's get some Huskars in. There we go. They're the masters of using shield walls to block incoming volleys of arrows. It's quite a bit of money, but okay. And yeah, even sort of unraised, that means that that's uh, 0.52 gold per month. But we are doing quite well in sort of money generation. So there we go. Yep. Yeah. We'll absolutely have some of those. And then what else do we get? Can we get anything else? Can't increase the size of those. We could get some light footmen. I'm not so bothered about them. I think we should possibly destroy that regiment. I think we should get rid of them at some point. Not right now, but I think we should get rid of them at some point and replace them with better troops. Um, Mangano, can we get some more bowmen? 55. We could have quite a lot of bowmen. Do you know what? Let's do it. There we go. So they're going to be at full strength in five months. Okay, and they're reinforcing. So when they're reinforcing, we do have to pay quite a bit of money. So, okay, so we've only got 13 gold left. Now, I don't normally like doing that. I don't like spending all our gold because at some point now, now we've got no gold, a thing will pop up, like an event will pop up and say, hey, a terrible thing is going to happen unless you spend a load of gold. And yeah, we don't have any gold now. So we'll have to wait and see. So, right, France, hang on a second. Let's just top up these troops. So we need to get ourselves quite a lot of archers. Oh, crikeys, here we go. Right, how much money do we need to spend? Accusations of witchcraft. Bloodstained cloth, 
crow's feathers, strange smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Leicestershire as proof that Wolfgith has been practicing witchcraft in her hut on the outskirts of their village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their sick animals and are calling for her execution. Okay, the evidence is circumstantial, release her. We get 300 stewardship lifestyle experience, which is what we're going for, which is great. However, Leicestershire gets upset peasants. Oh, you never want to upset the peasants. You always want happy peasants. Okay, that's not good. So popular opinion comes down by 25. What's our current popular opinion in Leicestershire? It was bad at one point, wasn't it? Has that gone away? We did have a sort of a, we went, had someone spread a rumor that we were like defiling tombs or something. That's gone away. So our popular opinion currently plus five. Okay, that's not too bad because of our lovely royal forest. So it would go down to minus 20. So Leicestershire would not like us for how long? Five years. Oh, crikey. Uh, we could, we could burn her. So, uh, yep, she's killed. We get stressed. We don't want to gather any more stress. We got stressed out last time. So, okay, so we don't want to do that because that's bad. Um, however, we do get satisfied peasants. Their opinion goes up. Or a witch, you say, and she joins, she joins the court. Is she any good? Um... Yeah, she, she is an honourable coward, however that works. Um, yeah, she's not actually that good. I think, can we just release her? I don't want to get any more stress, because that would be bad. What's our current stress level? Oh yeah, that pitches back over again. That would be a terrible idea. Let's, um, let's let her go. Okay, we're going to upset the peasants of Leicester. I'm sorry, everybody in Leicester. However, we have got ourselves access to a lovely new perk. Let's get this. Let's get organised muster rolls. Now, ideally, we want to get down here. We want to get down to popular figurehead because plus 50 opinion is very, very good. And that would sort out the grumpy peasants. But yeah, we need to get all those other ones first. Let's get this. Levy reinforcement rate up 100%. So our levies are reinforced far, far quicker, which is wonderful. And then we'll go down this. So when we've actually finished our wars, this, this is the plan. I've got a bit of a plan. When we've finished all of our fighting and stuff and we're at peace for a little while, we'll then save up our money and we will spend it on lots of buildings. We'll spend it on just improving infrastructure. We'll build lots of fields and farms and, I don't know, uh, barracks and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, um, we'll do all that, but we want to get these things in first because these particular perks make things a bit cheaper. So building construction costs down, building construction time down, all that kind of stuff. So we'll get those first before we start doing any building. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's a little way off. So there we go. Levy reinforcement rate up by 100%. That is very, very welcome indeed. We just need to hopefully, hopefully avoid the angry peasants. Um, okay, right. Let's watch these slowly total up then. How's our, um, how's our priest guy? Oh yeah, he's, he, he loves us because he's our friend. So that's wonderful. So there we go. So our priest is on board. Is there anybody else we need to, um, we need to make sure that really likes us? Uh, Reeve Eadwolf is not overly fond of us oh yeah because you know because we've blackmailed him so maybe maybe we should try and sway him we have no other schemes going on right now so let's try and sway him just to get his opinion of us up a tiny little bit oh no my spy master has come to me with grave news while we do not yet know who someone is plotting to kill my son and heir t <gasps> Oh, this is terrible news. We must stop the villain behind this. The existence of the murder T scheme is exposed. Oh no, you should never murder T. It is time for T Cupboard to face the judgment of God. No, it is not. T, T, be careful. Be careful, my son. People are out to kill you. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. Now it's quite fortunate that our, um, that our spy master is very, very good. She's got an intrigue of 26, which is wonderful. So hopefully, and yeah, she's on the sort of disrupt schemes thing as well. Hopefully she will be able to find out exactly who is doing that, who is trying to kill our beloved son and heir to the Cupboard Dynasty. And, um, and yeah, well, then we can deal with them if she finds them. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's a bit worrying. That is a worrying development. And let's get our marshal to increase control in some of our other places because, uh, yeah, the control came down when the big war was happening between the two kings. And yes, the control hasn't really had time to sort of top itself back up. So uh, pop over to Warwickshire. Go and sort out Warwickshire because, yeah, they generate a lot of levies, a lot of gold and stuff. So, yes, yeah, so if you could get the control back in Warwickshire, that would be splendid. A faction has been created against King Richard. OK, so a faction against our king and our liege. And in fact, looking at this, there are two factions in place right now against King Richard. Uh, this one here, that's you. So you want independence from the king. You want to you want to you know, go and do your own thing. You want to go your own way. Who are you? You are. Oh, crikey. OK, right. I'm, I'm putting money on the fact that I'm going to pronounce this 
entirely incorrectly. So the person who would like independence is Earl Yunir Ab Osni of Cornwall. Okay, well, there you go. Cornwall would like independence. Wow, that, that started very early on. Okay, so there we go. So Cornwall would like to be independent and you're on your own. You're just on your own. I don't think that's going to work. But okay, yeah, you're too weak to send an ultimatum. You don't have much in the way of military power. I don't think you would be able to take on the King of England and all of his troops all on your lonesome. But you know what? Well done for trying. At least you've made your intention sort of known. So there you go. And the other faction uh, wants a lower crown authority. So they would like the crown authority upon them to be lowered a little bit. They want some more control back. And that is Duke Ralph of Kent. Okay, so again, you're on your own. So nobody's joined you. You don't have much in the way of military power. Discontent is at zero. You are too weak. So I don't think it's going to really happen. But okay, things are going entirely the way of King Richard, though. So, you know, he is struggling a bit. People are trying to, you know, create factions against him. People do want, you know, different sort of things going on. Lower crown authority, independence. So, yes, it's not an easy time for King Richard. And our men-at-arms units are fully topped up. So yes, we've got 400 bowmen, 30 mangonels, 100 light footmen, 100 armoured footmen, and 200 huskars. I think now we go and help our French buddies. So where's the best place to kind of set off from? I think maybe here. So we'll go to just there. Um, that war is now on plus 65% for the war on Montpellier. So yes, our excuse to go to the south coast of France and, you know, top of our tans is still there. So let's head on over that way, shall we? So let us muster all of the troops, raise all of the armies, give them a little bit of time to just top up there. There we go. 2,887 people, including 10 knights, which is pretty impressive as well. Um, so let's grab you guys. Okay, now the other thing is we want to avoid any other conflict on the way. We want to avoid other fighting. And yeah, we don't want to get involved in sort of this war over here. So we kind of want to come around this way, I would have thought. Um, okay, who's involved in that war? Who's involved in that war? They're all solely down there. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and then who's involved in this particular fight? Um, you're kind of, yeah, you're all sort of packed around there. So maybe, maybe if we go, I mean, is it worth coming in on the sea and going across that way? Is that quicker? How does the game plot this? Are they the ones that have been taken. Hang on a minute. Hang on. What counters do you have in this particular thing? Um, yeah, Beziers and Milau are those two there. So yeah, okay. So if we grab our army, so where are you? Army, army, army. Come this way. If we go down here, if we say, right, we want to travel to here. What's the quickest route? Oh yeah, they go by sea. They go by the sea. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Right, let's go and try and help out our French buddies then. So there you go. Get on boats. This will be the longest journey that we've ever made by a boat. This is all very exciting indeed. So there we go. So we've got on a boat over here, sort of, yeah, which is around where Bristol would be. If, if, is Bristol there? Does Bristol exit there? The city of Bristol. So there it is. It's only a little sort of place right now. But, uh, but yeah, so the city of Bristol, we're going to get on boats and then we're going to head on round here, head on down this way and then go across the south of France which I'm sure will be very, very lovely and pretty and scenic and, uh, and you know, it's just very nice down there. Oh, Weristan has died of natural causes. Uh, okay, remind me what you did. Who were you? Oh, you were the Chancellor. Oh, okay. Right, we're going through quite a few Chancellors. Oh, oh dear. Right, we don't have very many good Chancellors available to us. Um, okay, let's put... I mean, you're the best. I mean, you're a knight. You might get killed. In fact, we've got quite a lot of knights and all of our other people are pretty rubbish. All of our vassals are really naff. Um, okay, you, Bjorn Wolf... You can be our Chancellor. There you go, Bjorn Wolf. We'll give you the official Chancellor bit of paper there. Oh dear. Okay, fine. I mean, yeah, he died of natural causes. That's kind of what happens. So let's just move Tom on a bit quicker. Let's get our troops down here. Oh dear. Um, what's that? Oh no, there's been another naughty Prince Archbishop exposed and people are not liking Catholicism quite as much anymore because yes, all of the people that practice it are doing silly things. In fact, yes, Catholicism further is, is only 30%. So yeah, sort of faiths have a further value and it's sort of uh, the higher it is, it increases the likelihood of people sort of converting to that particular faith. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit low. Okay, fine. There we go. Never mind. And Reed Edwolf has gained 25 opinion of us. Okay, I'm happy with that. We'll try again. He's only on plus 34, so we'll try again. And our troops are here sunning themselves in the lovely south of France. And we are here in this fort. Four months left. Oh my goodness me. That is ticking up very nicely indeed. Two per day, and there's starvation going on, 
and Clara has come of age. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so you've got a thrifty Clark. Okay, so just plus two, uh, sort of a two-star education trait, plus four to stewardship. Um, yeah, okay. Right, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on. Come out of that for a sec. So, Clara, let's have a look then. So, you are... Oh, yeah, you're very good at stewardship. You're really, really good. You're not very sort of learned and you're terrible at diplomacy. You're really awful. But, yeah, stewardship is all right. And your marshal's pretty good as well. Okay, and you're betrothed... Ah, you're, you're the one who's betrothed to Prince Renault of France, which is why we're here doing all this fighting in the first place. Okay, fair enough. Right, well, well done. There you go. Have a nice life. When Actually, when does um when does uh, Renault come of age? Uh, in a couple of years. So we're going to have to wait a couple of years, but then hopefully, yep, some grandchildren will appear in here. How are you doing in that regard there? Oh, various things have been built. So uh, bastions and curtain walls in Shrewsbury and Warwick which is good, because that gives us a bit of money, but also some extra protection over there as well. Right, how is the siege going? Only a couple of months left. We could, we could assault the fort, but I don't think we want to do that, because we've only got this amount of troops down here right now. So we'll, we'll, we, won't, we won't sort of kill them on uh, assaulting a fort. It doesn't look like these guys are coming in to sort of attack us in any way. We're kind of being entirely uncontested. We have got quite a big kind of force just there, but yeah, they're not really bothered right now. So if we get this back, I wonder... I wonder what will happen if we take these two counties back. So we're going to get this in not many days. It's on 81% as it is right now. If we come and sort this out, that's on 89%. So what if we then go to here, take that place back, and then maybe that's their capital down there. That's their capital. Um, Arles, Arles, possibly. I don't know how you pronounce that, but whatever. That place there. If we then head over to there... Maybe that will be the thing that decides the war. Although, yes, our war score is ticking up because we've got this. We're, we're holding the objective. The uh, sort of the county of Montpellier is held by the French. So we're currently, yeah, 47% of the war score is coming from the fact that the enemy haven't actually taken the thing that they want to take yet, which is a bit silly. We'll have to keep our eyes on that, actually, and just make sure that, uh, that they don't come in and steal that from under us. The holding of Nottinghamshire has got motivated workers for 10 years because Ermgard is very good at stewardship. The people in Nottingham are going to build things 15% quicker. That is very good. And how is that looking? The war score is 99%. Oh my goodness. Give it a little bit of time. In fact, who are you? You're the Duchy of Provence. Right, okay, hang on. Let's move you guys in over to Montpellier. Let's give ourselves a bit of a, give them a bit of a deterrent. So we'll pop into there and say, oh yeah, coming down here, are you? Yeah, well, we're here, and there's 3,090 of us. How many do you have? So just in case I've got an idea, but look, it's on 100. It's on plus 100%. Uh, King Philippe, King Philippe, you can sort this war out. And there we go. That is wonderful. So yes, we won the war. Splendid. So, um, yep, he gives 164 money to King Philippe. He loses his claim as well. So King Philippe knows that that is uh, probably going to be his for a little while longer. And what did we get? We got... 15, 15 prestige. Ah, but our opinion with King Philippe is now at 100 because we helped him win a war. Essentially, I mean, our war contribution was 100%. Oh, that's 100% because, oh, that was the percentage of the sort of allies that helped out. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So we don't get much prestige from it, but we have now got the very much the ear of the King of France. Now, could we... Okay, so be it. That's very good. Could we become his friend let's get this sway scheme done and now let's also look at what we need to do up here with this particular fight can we go and help somewhere what can we do with this war i mean can we just nip over here and just just take a few of these counties just to try and sort of level this score off a bit because yeah it's going very well oh no the attacker holds the war target that's quite bad um the duchy of flanders who are you hang on are you the other ally no okay who is who is that there who are those guys there attacking? I don't know who that person is. It doesn't seem to be any of them. It's not their allies. Okay, there's a person there that I don't know. Who are you? The First Army of Ath, a neutral army, controlled by Duke Arnulf. Okay, who's Duke Arnulf? Who who do you respond to? <laughs> Why are you guys there? What are you guys doing? They must be like mercenaries or something. And um, there's a bit of a war going on up there. Looks like the French are trying to take back some of that stuff, so they will not get that boost. So yeah, if we... um. If we run over to, say, here, if we send our troops over to there, maybe we can start taking a few of their counties over here, start claiming some of their territory, and then, then the war score will start changing our sort of favour. So, yeah, okay, we've got quite a lot of people. You know, it's an excuse to stay around France. It's all fine. So, yeah, we'll go over to this place. What's that called? Um, Neuf Chateau. 
Okay, that's a very good name. Okay, yeah, so we'll head over to Neuf Chateau and, um, and yeah, we'll see what we can do there. I don't know if we're going to uh, get there. Are people going to come attack us? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Um, okay, Sway, an opportunity. In my attempts to sway Reed Wolf to my interest, I found an opportunity. Okay, 70% is convinced. Uh, hang on, so what? So I emphasize shared interests. So there's a 70% chance that he gains 50 opinion of us and we spend 75 prestige. We've got loads of prestige. We've got absolutely loads of it. So we could increase his opinion of us by 50%. Oh, let's give that a go. If that works, it's brilliant. Yeah, he's convinced. Okay, and that ends the sway scheme. So now, uh, where are we? Scheme, scheme, scheme. Intrigue. Right, so come out of this. Don't do that scheme anymore. I don't like the secret scheme to murder T. That makes me sad. Um, can we become friends with the King of France? Is this going to work at all? Or is this just a complete nonsense? Let's try it. Befriend. Only 24%. He like oh no he doesn't like deceitful people which is what we are and his rank is uh, yeah he's higher so yes he want he doesn't want to really become friends with someone who has a, a lower rank. Um, do you know what we're not doing any other schemes? Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And there might be things that pop up where we could spend some money or whatever on sort of stuff like that. So yeah okay there we go. We'll we'll see if that works. I mean it might not work but never mind. I mean maybe he'll see us really really helping out in his wars and yeah that will sort of sway him toward us. Tourney troubles. As Duke, I've been obliged to attend a local jousting tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't start for at least another hour. My vassal Reeve Ulcertel is here. Okay, so you are from Peterborough. Okay, and as always, he's being an insufferable lout. His constant complaining is making everyone even more miserable than normal. Meanwhile, my friend Frederick is sitting under the pavilion, clearly bored halfway to death. Okay, so I have three kind of choices. I can push him into the horse's water trough, to liven things up. Ah, okay, so he then, we, he has to spend some prestige, does Reeve Ulcertel of Peterborough. We gain that amount of prestige and we lose a load of stress because we are wrathful. So we think it's funny that we push him into a water trough. We could spend some time uh, with Frederick under the pavilion. He becomes our, he becomes our best friend. Of course, yes, because he's our friend. Oh, hang on, there's, there's tears of friends. Okay, right, so he becomes our best friend. Okay, or have wasted enough time on this disaster, I lose 12 stress. I think maybe, is it worth him becoming our best friend? Because yeah, he's young, so he's not going to you know, die of old age or whatever anytime soon. And I don't know what you get if you have a best friend. Let's go and become best buddies with Frederick. Oh, that's nice. Right, I've now got a best friend and he has an amazing hat too. Oh, wonderful. We can meet together and you know, talk about how amazing our hats are. Okay, this looks serious. This looks serious. There's quite important people involved in this. So both Duke Glowithian of de Hubarth and I are held in esteem by our liege, King Richard. Don't trust him. Don't trust Duke Glowithian. He's a baddie. He's a bad man. However, when it comes to handing out titles, honour and wealth, one of us will always be the first among equals. The upcoming gathering at Winchester Castle gives me a chance to ensure that I am the one with the King's favour. Okay. So as a smooth talker, this should be easy. Diplomacy challenge, 52% I become friendly with the king or 47% Glowithian befriends the king. Oh, the odds of that are a little bit. That's not overly in our favour. That's not great. I will illustrate that God already favours me. The chance of that is less with a learning challenge or we should work together, not against each other. Our vassal opinions of all of our fellow vassals go up by 15%. Uh, 15, sorry, not 15%. Just 15, I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah, just plus 15 um, okay, does he have, I mean, how many of the fellow vassals do we have in terms of, in terms of equal to us? I suppose he has quite a lot, actually. I suppose he has quite a lot, because yes, he's got all of England now, hasn't he? Um, okay. I mean, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to just chance this. I'm tempted to chance that. King Richard loses 15 opinion of us. Okay, this is, you know, if it goes wrong, and he gets, uh, Duke Glowithian gets a weak hook on the king. If we succeed, we become friendly. We get a hook on the king. Glowithian loses opinion of us, but he doesn't really like us much anyway. So no sort of, you know, nothing lost there. It's 50-50, but it's better than the other option, which is, what, 60-40. Let's have a go. Let's try and do a diplomacy challenge, shall we? Come on then, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a flipper coin, isn't it? Let's see what happens. I become friendly with the king. Okay, so the king likes us and we have a weak hook on the king. And, um, and yeah, Duke Glowithian is out in the cold and he really hates us now. And we've got a favour hook. 
Okay, that's wonderful. And we are down here besieging Neuf Chateau, which is a wonderful name. Uh, various hooks have expired on us. Uh, yeah, it's minus 50% now, the war. Those people are not involved in any war with us, I don't think. Ooh. Ooh. You're the kingdom of Lotharingia. Yeah, okay, you're the enemy. Are you coming toward us? Are you coming to, are you coming to get us? Um, ooh, a perk. Uh, yeah, let's take cutting cornerstones. Absolutely, we will do that. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let's see where these guys are going first. Are you coming down to deal with us? Right, I rather suspect you are. Okay, right. Um, right, run away because there's 4,000 of them and only 3,000 of us. Let's run away into lovely, safe French territory. How about we head over here? I heard that place is nice at this time of year. I think we can get out in time. I think we can abandon that place in time. I don't think they're going to catch us up. That's a shame because we were looking pretty good at getting that place under our control. Um, they're on minus 42%. They're looking okay. They're looking okay. They're bringing it back a bit. It's kind of, you know, it's waxing and waning all over the place. Yeah, they didn't like that, did they? They didn't like that. That was them and their allies. That was an army of the Lotharingians and also, yeah, some of their buddies as well. Um, yeah, that they're quite big. That's quite a strong force right there. But look, the French are getting that place back. They are taking back the uh, the duchy of whatever is Flanders. Um, so yeah, there's no longer any war score from it being controlled. But uh, but yeah, just the occupied territories. The occupied territories is terrible. And there's no war score from prisoners. But what's happened there? Either the prisoners died or they've given him up for like money or favours or whatever. Um, oh, that's a bit of a shame. And now when we go back in siege, we're going to have to do it again. If you could kill some of these troops, friends, that would be great. Because there's quite a lot of you. There's quite a big pile of French troops. If you could kill these guys, that would be great. King Richard has declared war on King Uisdin. Who are you? Um, oh, okay. England and Scotland are at war again. Okay, what for? The Earldom of Cumberland. It's always the Earldom of Cumberland, isn't it? <laughs> the place that makes the lovely sausages is proving to be very, very problematic for both kings. I think rather than pop our armies over there then, trying to claim territory that we then might never get because they could just send their big forces down here. Why don't we just go up here and just join the French? Because the French are sieging that place. If we join the French, that will mean 7,000 people on that particular square, which means that we can go and join in battles and all sorts of things. So that could be quite powerful. That might be our best option. Um, oh, and Renault has married Clara. Yay! Oh, lovely. A royal wedding. How very splendid. Because, of course, yeah, he's the Prince of France and everything. So there we go. That's quite nice. Some of our kids are getting married, which is all lovely. Okay, let's just sort this out. I want to get this sorted now. We need to get this sorted. This war has to end in favour of our buddies, in favour of the person I want to become our friend, the King of France. So let's just get all of our troops in there. And Christina has come of age. Wonderful Amazonian Christina. Okay. You are a thrifty clerk, so just like your sister, in fact. Okie doke. Right, Christina, 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 what do your stats look like? Uh, yeah, you're okay as well. You're ambitious, impatient, and temperate. But also, you're Amazonian, which I just think is absolutely wonderful. So there you go, you're a thrifty Amazonian. <laughs> I mean, I suppose the Amazonians have to have someone to do their accounting, so, you know, I guess that makes sense. Okay, our troops have joined in the siege on this place. So now there are seven and a half thousand people there. And Christina and Ferdinand are now married, which is wonderful. So more of our children are married. Oh, it's all so lovely. They're all leaving the nest. Oh, a little sort of, a little bit of a cry there. Okay, so now we are remaining here right now. The French are going over there. They're trying to claim back places in Flanders, aren't they? Now, do we go up here and have a bit of a fight? Because there's only 2,300 of them right now. We could go here and kind of pick on them. 15 days, we will probably win. The, uh, the, what was that? The owner is two years in debt. Oh, so because, oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Now, the rules of that have changed now. Some more people have joined them. Uh, run away. Run away. Running away from the battle. Because I don't think we would have won that particular one. They are losing quite a lot of troops. And what's happened there? There's 2,200 of them just there. France, take take your chance right now. Go and kill them, France. Who are those guys? The Duchy of Upper Lorraine? Uh, who, are you on our side or what? I don't know who. I don't know who's fighting who anymore. Hang on. Who is who's the Duchy of Upper Lorraine? Whose side are you on? I don't understand whose side you're on. Do we need to worry about you? Do we need to fight you? I'm not sure. Do you know what? Let's head over to. Oh, they're dealing with that. Why don't we head over to Calais? We will besiege that place. 
And at least that then frees up these two counties. So we'll see what's going on with that. But yeah, they've just taken that back, look. They've just taken that back. So we'll siege this. And hopefully our French buddies can um, can join in some fighting after that. Yeah, there's quite a lot of them. There's a lot of them in that particular army just there. But they're not bothered at the moment. They're just letting us siege this place and the French siege this. They're not coming in to fight us because they are outnumbered. Okay, this is fine. Right, we'll get these sieges out of the way and then we'll see what the enemy are up to. Ah, okay, right. So there is a development in our befriend scheme. So after learning that King Philippe will be attending the dance in the castle town of Bologna... Bologna? Uh, I don't know. Bologna. We'll say Bologna. I decided that it would be the perfect occasion to pass by to ensure I get some face-to-face -face time with him. The ball was exquisite, and King Philippe put on a fine show. Afterward, I told him how impressed I was, and we got to talking. By the time I left, it felt as though we'd known each other a lifetime already. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Ends our scheme. We've become friends with him. The chance of that was very small, but it's worked. Our scheme has ended and we have become friends. We're now friends with the King of France, which can be no bad thing. Because if we get into trouble, surely now we can ask our friend to help us. And yet he's the King of France. He's going to have loads and loads of troops and all sorts going on. So, okay, that is wonderful. Right, our friend does need our help, however, because, uh, because you know, the war is still raging over here on the north of his country. So we need to sort this out. So, right, how near are they to taking that? That's only sort of, what, 17 days left. So they'll take this place. And then I think if they're going to head over to that place and have a fight, we will join in that particular fight. So the war score is going to tip back 38%. Then we're going to take this place. So now there we go. We control that place. Minus 26%. We Ideally, we want to go and siege their capital. But they've got all these troops just here. So where are the French going? Where are the French going? France, why don't you just go and attack them? We could all just join in in a massive fight against them and see what happens. But I don't want to go in there and have a fight just in case we lose. And that brings the war score down. But yeah, they're slowly building up all their troops. Um, France, do you want to join me in an attack? Do you want to join me in a bit of a fight over there? No? Okay, fine. I mean, it would be really good if you could do that. Defender of the faith. There was a commotion among the children today. Nest was attempting to preach among her fellow youngsters and became the target of a small fight. Okay, who are you? You are Nest at Earl Alfgar's court in Herefordshire. Okay, so you're from Herefordshire. Goodhat was furious that anyone could target someone attempting to speak on behalf of God and chased away the other children. Okay, so you will serve the divine well child. Goodhat keeps the trait zealous. Oh, okay, right, so you're going to keep that. Don't be afraid. Charge in when you have to. We gain 30 stress, but uh, he loses Zealous and becomes brave. Oh, okay, but we lose 30 stress. Oh, that's, that's terribly timed. We can't have another break. We can't have another break. It would be really, really useful to change his trait. So, yes, yeah, so he loses Zealous and becomes brave, or he loses Zealous and becomes calm. Oh, both of those would be brilliant. But unfortunately, if we help you do this, then yeah, we're, we're going to lose our mind a bit. So you will serve the divine well, child. That is unfortunate. Could we... Hang on, hang on. Uh, da, 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 decisions. Could we do one of these? Yeah, do you want to host a feast? Or shall we call a hunt? Because both of those bring our, bring our stress down. Let's host another feast. These have gone well in the past. And we lose a bit more stress than we'd normally because we have friends. And I think each friend we have increases our stress loss when we have a stress loss kind of a sort of thing here. So we're going to lose 36 stress and it's going to cost us 100 money. We've got quite a bit of money. So, OK, let us have ourselves a lovely feast. The Feast of Cupboard, indeed. A cheery gathering. The guests are gathered in the hall. Lords and ladies from the near and far reach of the realm. The mood is bright and the spirits are high. Welcome, friends. Hello, everybody. I think we might be attacked momentarily by these people here. Um, okay, right, absolutely. Put on, put on your fighting shoes because we are going to be attacked. Uh, right, breaking horses. Eating was well underway and drinking a little too far along when Earl Elfgar decided it was time for some horse riding. Oh, dearie me, drunken antics. My stables were locked up tight with guidance from Christina. Oh, Christina. Elfgar soon led a group of eager riders inside. With absolutely no control over my animals, there was swearing, laughter and broken bones as men and women fell from horses ambling around the hall. Other creatures in the stables did not get away much easier and one goat nearly caved in under the weight of Duchess Ermgard. You can't say that. Um, okay, stable hands, save these people from themselves. We spend 75 prestige, we've got loads of it, we get lively feast. So our stress gain comes down a bit more. 
So yeah, minus 25%. Oh no, right. So if we gain stress, it's 25% less than it would be. Okay, right. That's pretty good for 10 years and our, our cavalry do more damage <laughs> because of horses. Okay, fine. Uh, do that then. Yes. I fear this war is going to go against us. This battle here is going to go badly because these guys are going to come in. France. Where are you, France? Why have you abandoned us? You've wandered off down here for no real reason. Yeah, we are going to get horribly, horribly panned here. Now, against just them, we might stand a chance. But unfortunately, yes, they're bringing in an extra one and a half thousand people. Uh, the feast ends, which is lovely. Um, the feast has brought us closer and we'll be able to look back and chuckle at the escapades of Elfgar and his drunken band of merrymakers. Keep me in your hearts, vassals. We gain 150 prestige. We gain the trait Eager Reveler. Diplomacy up two. And Intrigue up one. Oh, oh, that's quite good. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so that's permanent, is it? That's forever. Oh, good. And um, yeah, every guest gains 20 opinion of us. And our stress has come down, which is wonderful. Okay, keep me in your hearts, vassals. However, our stress might go up a little bit as we get brutally murdered in here. Um, yeah, this isn't this isn't going well. It's going badly. <gasps> Bernard. Bernard has been murdered. Bernard. Is, oh, Bernard's fighting. Oh, oh, OK. <laughs> is is Bernard a knight? Why is Bernard a knight? He's rubbish. Who made Bernard a knight? Who signed that form? Oh, Bernard is dead. Bernard is dead. We get 26 stress. All our stress comes back on us. And Bernard has been murdered, possibly through some catastrophic mismanagement of his dad, who didn't realise he was a knight. He snuck out to that battle he did. He crept out the, you know, crept out the bathroom window, went and put on his knight things and went to have a fight. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. He did not deserve this. Pause time for a second, because we are being absolutely slaughtered in this fight. We're being completely, horribly, horribly murdered. But, um, oh no. Somebody else has died as well. Bjorn Wolf. Who are you? Uh, oh, another Chancellor. We're going through the like dark arts teachers. Right, okay. Um, You for now. You for now. Go and do that, please. Just temporarily. But you're probably going to die as well. Oh, this is a tragedy. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Knights. Um, okay. T. T is a knight. T, I forbid you from being a knight. You're not allowed to go and be a knight. Stop that. Um... Elfnoth will recruit you. Yeah, go and become a knight, my good sir. Anybody, anybody else who can do knight things, go and do it. I mean, these guys are rubbish, but they're knights. They're just awful. Can we invite some more knights? 150, yeah, go and do that, please. We need some better knights. Oh, Bernard. Bernard is dead. Okay. Right, well, there we go. There we go. Our first big family loss. Bernard is no more. That is, that's very sad. That's very sad. I mean, yeah, I didn't realise that he would automatically kind of assign himself to be a knight. I mean, he wasn't too bad, actually. He was average. He was brave. I suppose, do you know what? He went out valiantly and bravely and nobly, which is what he would have wanted. Because he was brave and he died fighting for what he believed in. Okay, let's see us get completely murdered on the battlefield with this horribly one-sided war that we kind of got stuck in. Thanks for coming to help, France. Thanks a bunch. Loads of our people have been horribly murdered. Oh, and people have been captured. So Herobert has been taken prisoner. Okay, yeah, France, we could have done with your help there, but you did not come and help us. I'm now a bit cross with you. I'm a little bit cross. Um, yeah, that was an absolute and utter slaughter. Right, dismiss that. And you know what, you lot? Uh, can we... Oh, no, right, you're retreating. When you've retreated, we're just going to disband you. We're just going to disband and we're just going to get out of there. We're going to go back home. We're going to lick our wounds and then maybe, <laughs> maybe come back and join in later on. But yeah, that didn't work at all. Um, can we disband in a friendly area? Do you know what? Pop over the sea. Costs us a bit of money, but pop over the sea and uh, disband over in England. Because yeah, do you know what? The French, you could, you could go and kill those guys right now. You could go in and fight them, France. You've got loads of people. But no, instead, you're just constantly sort of claiming counties and stuff. So we've helped you out with one war. I'm afraid our troops just got horribly, horribly murdered a bit, uh, including my own son. So, um, so yeah, I think we will um, we'll sort of leave that war for now. Um, can we disband in a friendly area? Okay, fine. Well, let's go all the way back to Northampton then. I'll drop you off at the door. <laughs> like a taxi service. Uh, a knight has arrived. Um, okay, Gilam. Okay, uh, yes, we'll, we'll have you just because you're not terrible. So, 150? 
goodness. You're not that good. Good grief. Okay, no, not you. You're you're very expensive for a knight. And development negotiations, uh, development growth in Northamptonshire is going to go up a bit, which is excellent. Right, let's get everybody back home, shall we? You lot get back to Northampton. Another knight has appeared. You're very good. Are you going to cost us 12 bazillion? No, 20. 20 to get you in. Yes, absolutely. And you can become a knight. There you go. You've got your knight things on. And then, um, and then yes, you lot here disband the army. Yeah, okay. Don't care how long it takes. Just just disband them all, please. Oh, dear me. Okay. Oh, we gain the trait ill. Oh, dear me. Oh, look how sad and shaky he looks. Duke or peasant, high or low, it does not matter. In the end, we are all mortals. I was reminded of this as I woke coughing in the early hours, a dull ache pounding through my head and throat. You seem to be under the weather, my lord. I know a fair number of suitable remedies. Do no more than what is necessary. So a safe treatment might lessen symptoms temporarily and has few risks. It is too late for caution, so we can do something incredibly risky, but it might work. Or leave me be and we just don't do anything. I mean, he's got an ache and uh, sort of in his head and throat. He's got a cold. He's got a cold. Do no more than what is necessary. So we're going to gain ill which does not sound brilliant. The trait ill. Prowess, four fertility down, not so bothered. Dread loss is down. Oh dear. Um, okay, yeah. Do no more than what is necessary. Ill, a little brighter. Uh, Edmar presented me with the charred carcass of a cat and prompted me to dig in. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, should we... Uh, would you like to go and do some more research on medical treatments? Because that doesn't sound entirely legitimate. <laughs> What's going on there? As I ate, he told me how he had chased the plump feline around my holdings for hours. I think he wanted praise for his hard work, but the vile taste of the meal kept me silent. In the end, the fatty food turned out to be just what I needed. For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated and the world seems a little brighter. Okay, so we've not recovered from our illness, but we have got reduced disease symptoms. So we've got ourselves a huge boost to disease resistance. Okay, good job. So hopefully we will be able to heal up a little bit sooner. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. So we're a bit poorly and we've now sort of called all our troops back, which is wonderful. So yeah, the French are going to have to fight that war on their own. And it's, it's, oh, it's kind of going to and fro. Okay, what are you doing? Lower Silesia, Duchess Anastasia of Lower Silesia has announced the world that she and her vassals have converted to Bogomilism. I've never even heard of that. What is that? It's a Christian faith. Um, okay, so they've all become, become Bogomilites. Bogomites? I don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested. I don't want to change religion to whatever that is because it sounds all sorts of strange and I'm, I'm we're happy with our religions right now. Our religions are all good. Oh my goodness me. Crusader Kings. The event for which the actual you know, whole game is named has actually happened. Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land suffer all manner of abuse and their roots are fraught with danger. In order to protect the pilgrims and secure Jerusalem for Christ and the faithful, His Holiness Pope Alexander has accepted the possibility of an outright invasion by joint Christian forces. The Crusades are going to begin. Christian faiths now have access to Crusades. So we're not actually going on a crusade right now. They've not sort of kicked them off, but the Pope at any point could decide that he would like to go and do some crusading. Oh my goodness me. Right, we have another knight person. Um, yeah, you'll do. Absolutely. Just, just get somebody in. Yes, there we go. Right, you're recruited to court. Oh, I feel a bit sorry for... I feel a bit sorry for Bernard. I should have really realised that he was actually you know, set up to be a knight. I should have looked. But there we go. Never mind. Oh, yeah, he died in battle. He died bravely and nobly. And it was a good, solid death there. But uh, but yeah, it, it could have been avoided. I feel a little bit silly now. But there we go. Never mind. Lesson learned. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we need to increase control in a couple of places. Shropshire and Herefordshire. I know. Shropshire. Why not? Go and work on that place first. Do you know, we've got a great big pile of money. We've got 536 gold just sitting there. Why don't we just spend it on some lovely improvements and things? Now, one thing I was thinking, over here, the Barony of Bosworth is currently entirely empty. There is nothing here. It's just a good old big fear with nothing in it. We can build a new thing. It's very expensive, but we can build a thing. We can build a castle... So that costs us 380 monies. It takes five years to get constructed, but we have a new castle or we could build a new city or we could build a new temple. I'm tempted to build a city. Now, what does that tell us? As a feudal ruler, you may not personally hold city holdings. You will have to grant the holding to someone after it's finished. Absolutely, that's fine. So 380 money, five years, we get ourselves a city. 
which is wonderful. I think we do that. Let's build ourselves a city over there in this empty holding because there's nothing there. And that's a bit of a waste. That could be generating taxes and levies and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, yeah, we'll have ourselves a city constructed just there. And I think... I think it's a bit cheaper because we have all those lovely kind of benefits to, from our sort of perks and the Erm Guard gives us some stuff as well. So, you know, it's building, building these things are a little bit cheaper, which is wonderful. And then we've got 156 monies. Where else shall we go? Where else shall we treat? What about, uh, what about over here? Do you want to build a Staffordshire something else? Do you want to increase the size of their crop fields? 180 it will cost to do that. What about in the church? That's full. Yeah, where do we want to sort of... Is there a place which has got loads of space left? What about down here? The guild halls, hunter lodges, and what else can we give them? How about, to get more money, how about a forestry? Because buildings are done quicker and we get a bit more money from it as well. So yeah, absolutely. Over in Ludlow, make yourself a forestry. There we go. And now that money that we did have has entirely vanished. So let's move time on and let's try and get the money back again. Okay, so the king, foolish King Richard, would like our son Goodhat to be raised by Aubrey, a most skillful guardian. Okay, who is your current guardian? Who's guardianing you right now? It's me. I am guardianing you right now. Okie doke. Um, so Aubrey. Okay, how good is Aubrey? Oh, Aubrey's quite terrible. No, Aubrey is not. He's not a most skillful guardian. Your name of King Richard the Foolish is indeed apt because that guy, he's a bit rubbish. I mean, you know, Walthoff isn't amazing. Walthoff is not the, you know, a demigod among men, but he's better than Aubrey here. So, uh, so no, I'd rather not. So when we say no, he loses 15 opinion of us for 10 years. Uh, he's got 47 opinion of us right now. Yeah, we're declining that. Absolutely no. Good hat, you stay with me. The faithful prepare for war. A papal envoy has reached my court, bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Alexander issued a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic duke, I am expected to prepare my men in support of this most holy cause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself. To all those who will take the fight against the vile infidels desecrating the holy grounds of Jerusalem, the Holy See promises full absolution from all sins and a guaranteed place in heaven. Oh my goodness me. So, my warriors will be ready to fight. We pledge to join the Crusades, called by Pope Alexander as soon as they begin. We get 90 piety, which would be quite nice. Um, and the Crusade for the Kingdom of Jerusalem gets... So there's a war chest. Okay, so the war chest receives a thousand prestige and 300 piety um i'll gladly you know, chip in with some money we lose quite a lot of money and the war chest gains some money but we haven't got that money to lose or perhaps i should consider joining nothing happens no absolutely we're catholic the pope has called for our help we will absolutely go and join in we will pledge to join the crusade as soon as it begins yes we will support you my pope oh my goodness me are we going to have to go to war somewhere quite considerably far away? I mean, yeah, it's it's a long way away. It's a long way away is Jerusalem all the way down there. Um, okay, ill, my old self. Oh, it's, it's gone. It's gone. We've got better. As I woke this morning and saw rays of sunshine falling through my window, it took me a moment to realise I'd slept soundly for the first time in weeks. I did not wake up coughing once. I'm glad to be well again. We lose the trait ill. Okay, marvellous. Now, um, what's that? No beneficiary selected for crusade. In, holy, in Great Holy Wars, each participant may have a beneficiary. This beneficiary will get some of the conquered titles if the war is won. It is best to choose a beneficiary that likes you or will bring renown to your dynasty. Uh, okay. So the crusade for the Kingdom of Jerusalem. It's the yeah, it's the Pope versus Caliph Abu Mansur. Crikey, that's a big name. Al-Nazar ibn al-Mustansir of the Fatimid Sultanate. So that's who the war is between. Launches in 14 months. 14 months, oh my goodness. Um, relative military strength, 10,500 versus their 7,000. The war chest is full of, of exciting goodies. Okay, and we get to a point of beneficiary. Okay, so what was it? They get they get titles, did it say? They get some of the conquered titles. Oh, okay, what well, can we appoint us? Um, oh, uh, the beneficiary has to be, oh, it's one of our daughters. Okay, I'm not quite sure why it's one of our daughters, but okay. Uh, well, do you know what? Do you know what? Christina, can we get an Amazonian down there somewhere? That'd be great. So, uh, yeah, you... I've always had a, fond, a fondness for Christina because she, she's Amazonian. She's an Amazonian person. She's like this Herculean mega person. She's a... Uh, yes, let's choose you. Christina, absolutely. We'll pick you. You can be the beneficiary of the crusade for the kingdom of Jerusalem. Whatever that involves, I don't really know. But yes, you can, you can benefit from this particular fight. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't know why 
why we couldn't pick, yeah, why we couldn't pick tea or good hat or whatever. I don't know why we couldn't pick those. But okay, there we go. Right, so we've now got ourselves a beneficiary done. We've got Christina in. And in 14 months, we are going to join in the crusade for the kingdom of Jerusalem. Oh, and I think the French have lost their war. It's on minus 100%. So I think the Lotharingians or whatever are going to take that place. It looks like they have. Yes, we lost the war. We didn't do very well at all. We got ourselves 52 prestige and our opinion with king philippe of france has come right oh no no we got opinion we increased our opinion by another 53 did we but it's already at 100 and he's our mate so okay that's fine so yeah he lost though he lost that's not good is it that's not helpful at all okay there you go defeat so be it however that does mean that now we've sort of lost the we're not at war anymore because we were at war all that time technically so now we can see all of our little sort of our lovely sort of you know tax incomes again on here rather than sort of all the you know, defensive sort of capabilities of all of our places and i noticed down here as well there's a little sort of icon there for the crusade for the kingdom of jerusalem which sounds very wonderful however if we're going on a crusade should we not invest in some more troops? Maybe, maybe we should get some more troops. I mean, light footmen, do we just get rid of them? Do we destroy that regiment? Because they're a bit rubbish. Okay, they're nice and cheap, but I think we get rid of them. So abolish them. We don't want those. What else can we get? Um, so we've got Huskars, light footmen, we've got bowmen. We can keep increasing the size of those. Pikemen. Pikemen might be quite useful. We haven't got any of those. Or horsemen. So horsemen are, yeah, they're not very good in hills, mountains, desert mountains, or wetlands. They are good in dry lands and plains. I imagine if we're fighting over, if we send them down to sort of Jerusalem, I imagine that's, it's quite deserty. I don't know how mountainy it is down there. Um, yeah, what's it looking like down here? Dry lands. Yeah, that, I mean, that would make perfect sense. Do we get ourselves some light horsemen? Just pop some light horsemen in and just see how we do. And they're quite good. They're very good. And they're good at pursuing as well. So how about we do this? Let's get ourselves a unit of light horsemen. Okay, so they're now on their way. And then, where are they? There. Can we increase their size up to two? So, okay, so another 95 money. 200 light horsemen. And they will be ready by the time we actually have to go to war on the Crusades. And we can pick perk. We'll pick professional workforce. Building construction time and holding construction down by 30%. Oh, that's quite good. That's a lot of time. So yeah, that holding now will be done in three years. That was five years, not too long ago. Okay, right. That is wonderful. Okay, let's let our sort of um horsemen unit build up, up to 200. How long is that going to take? Um, I do not know. How long away is the war? Only seven months until the crusades of the kingdom of Jerusalem begin and Nottinghamshire is under siege. From whom? The petty kingdom of Connaught. Uh, what? Hang on, what, what, why are you there? Go away, stop attacking me. Oh, he's aligned, uh, aligned himself with the Scottish. So they've come down and decided to attack me. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't, I assume I can defend. Let us, let us uh, have a rally point in Melton. Let's raise our troops up right the heck here. Yeah, bye-bye now, bye-bye. There's quite a lot of us and there's not that many of you. So if you would like to clear off, that would be splendid. I'm not doing a cat and mouse thing where you run around the territory and you keep popping in and sieging places. No, no, no. That's not going to keep happening. If you could just go away and let's increase the control down in Herefordshire and control then will be all absolutely tip top and splendid around the entire lovely Duchy of Cupboard. Ah, splendid. The English troops have come down here to deal with these people from Ireland. So I think now we can indeed stand down once again. I think we can do that. Yeah, there's no hostile armies around. New acquisitions. During the daily management of my realm, I have learned of several different opportunities I can pursue. Each opportunity has great potential, but realistically, I, I can only pursue one of them. I must determine what would ultimately give me the most value. I've heard rumours of a lost tome. Okay, so we get a tome of lost knowledge, an old ledger. Okay, so we've got a higher chance of getting a, a, a lost knowledge tome for plus two stewardship and plus one learning. Lord Nicholas could use some help managing his holdings. Who's Lord Nicholas? Um, a vassal in the county of England, located in Cardiganshire. Oh, you're over in you're over in Wales. Okay. Or securing a trade deal will fill my treasury. Three hundred and fifteen gold. I could get right now. Goodness. But that thing gives us. That's yeah. What's that? Stewardship plus two and learning plus one for five years, or just stewardship plus one for five years. 
Is that going to generate, if we increase our stewardship by two, is that going to give us the equivalent of 315 gold over those five years? I do not know. I'm very tempted to just take 315 gold right the heck now. Just, just have that right now. Ah, we will disband our troops because the uh, attackers who did come and try and siege Nottingham have been driven away quite nicely by the English forces. Thank you, English fighting peoples. Oh, okay, right. Another chance for Goodhat to replace one of his traits with something else. Because, uh, because yes, this situation has come up. So, uh, okay, he's been impressed with one of the household knights for a long time. He's met them in person and, yeah, they've had a little chat. So either... He can keep patient, which is quite good. He can uh, lose patient and get generous, so diplomacy plus three, or he can lose patient and get diligent, which is, that's very good, but their stress does go up. But it does give us some stress doing that. What's that? 23. So 63 plus 23. Hang on, Master's Penge. That would be 88. Oh, that's quite high. That's quite high. But he could lose patient for just plus two learning, and he could get something very good. Diligent is brilliant. That's plus one to all of the skills. Let's get that. Let's do this. It might stress us out a little bit, but it's fine. Yes. Okay, good hat. Become a bit more diligent than patient. The time has finally come to bring St. George's holy wrath against the vile infidels of Jerusalem. Inflamed by righteous fury and unyielding resolve, the great army of crusaders assembled by Pope Alexander sets forth to deliver divine justice upon the wicked and earn their place in heaven and the music is absolutely amazing it is super inspiring music okay here we go deus vult a crusade is launched for jerusalem immediately so has happened a load of stuff has been divided among the participants oh so gold and piety and prestige has been divided among the people involved in the war oh my goodness me and yes we do seem to have hang on have we been given that already because we just got 315 monies um, I'm not sure if we've been given it right now. Let's press this button that we must have got given it and the war has begun. The Crusades are underway and I think that is a perfect point to leave it. So next time out with this, hopefully this wonderful sort of uh, score, the wonderful music will be there. Um, we will come back and we will see how we get on in the Crusades. I mean, we have got to travel quite a long way all the way down here. All this territory is available for, you know, it's up for grabs, however. Um, so yeah, Jerusalem, obviously over here. I imagine the bulk of the fighting will be over here. I wonder if we can just, like, sail over here or something. Go over here and just capture some territories that are over this way. There's lots of impassable terrain around there. It might be quite tricky to move around. But if we just sort of nip over here, avoid the fighting, and just grab ourselves loads and loads of territories, which we can do relatively easily because we have got a lot of war machines now. Um, if we do that, Maybe that will contribute to the war score and we will be relatively, yeah, we're kind of relatively distanced from the main theatre of war, which is going to be over here. Oh, this is very exciting. This is wonderful. So yes, we'll finish up and we'll come back next time and see how we get on in the Crusades. It, it kind of ends on an exciting note in that we're going to go to join in a great big uh, religious holy war. It's a bit sad because, of course, yeah, Bernard... Poor Bernard is no longer with us. And I feel a bit guilty because, because yeah, it's all our fault. But do you know what? He, yeah, he died in battle. It was a brave, noble death. So uh, farewell, Bernard. We we barely knew ye. But uh, but yes, you shall live on in our memories, Bernard. You will never be forgotten, Bernard. So, uh, so yeah, let's finish up for now. We'll come back. We'll see how we get on next time in the Crusades. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Kunik, your time is now. And you have missed, Kunik. <laughs> this is this is unacceptable, Kunik. And Ash's caravan has been ambushed by man-hunting chinchillas. <laughs> Are you going to land on my potatoes? <laughs> that is just not the done thing. Oh, there's a lot of them. One, two, three. These guys have got amazing hair. I'm delighted that we've actually done something and it's worked.